After years of relentless effort to secure certification, the 777X program seemed to be inching closer to the finish line. But then, a shocking twist suddenly appeared to block this journey, the looming risk of yet another certification delay. With each passing day, customer patience wears thinner, while the competitive pressure from Airbus grows stronger. But what exactly happened? Why does the 777X continue to face delays? And how will this affect the aviation industry? Let's find out. In an effort to reassure the market, Boeing released impressive figures from the 777-9's flight test program. Five jets were involved, completing 1,500 flights and accumulating a total of 4,100 flight hours. Boeing CEO Kelly Ortberg reinforced this optimism on September 11th, stating, We're doing a lot of sorties and have no new technical issues on the aircraft or the engines. With this confident declaration, the aviation industry believed the commercial launch of the 777X was imminent. But what many people found astonishing is, at a Morgan Stanley conference, Ortberg himself offered a cautious admission that completely contradicted his earlier statements. He candidly announced, We're clearly behind our plan in getting the certification done. Ortberg pointed out that the FAA was approving at a slow pace, and Boeing had yet to receive approval for a large portion of the certification program, with the agency instead granting incremental approvals through the 777-9's Type Inspection Authorization, TIA. Here's the kicker. The immense workload required for certification now faces the risk of further delays. While Boeing confirmed in late 2024 that the first approval and delivery would be pushed back to 2026, an admission that the 2025 timeline was unrealistic, analysts' fears run much deeper. They are concerned that the certification process could be prolonged until 2027. So, what's next? If approval happens in 2027, the first deliveries could only begin after that. This means some airlines might not be able to deploy the wide-body aircraft for scheduled passenger flights until 2028, a delay of seven to eight years compared to the original planned timeline of 2020. With Ortberg, the man tasked with turning the struggling aircraft manufacturer around, now publicly confirming the delay, the 777X launch could become one of the most costly and notable delays in aviation history. So what does this mean for the aviation industry? The 777X development program has been significantly delayed, mainly because Boeing is facing complex technical barriers amidst increased scrutiny from the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. One of the most serious incidents occurred when the U.S. manufacturer was forced to ground the entire flight test fleet from August 20, 2024 to January 20, 2024-25 after discovering broken thrust links, extremely critical components that secure the GE Aerospace GE-9X turbofan engines to the aircraft's structure. But here's the crux of the matter. While new aircraft launches rarely go smoothly, and all new aircraft face some form of delay, as seen most recently with the Airbus A321XLR, delayed by over a year, the delay for the 777X is unprecedented. This creates an impact that could not be worse for the entire aviation industry. So, what happens now? 777X customers will continue to grapple with older, less efficient aircraft, which are large in capacity, and should have been immediately retired to make way for the new generation. For example, Emirates, the airline with the most 777X orders, is currently still operating its aging 777-300ERs, which consume significantly more fuel than the new version. The continued use of these aircraft not only increases operating costs, but also causes maintenance and service disruption issues. Currently, Boeing holds unfinished orders for 565-7X aircraft, including 463-9s, 59-8 freighters, and 43-8 passenger jets. However, pressure from airlines who have changed their forecasts and publicly expressed frustration over the company's repeated missed launch timelines will begin to mount. They have run out of patience, and this delay could be the final straw. Indeed, for airlines such as Emirates, which had planned to rely on the 777X for the future of their long-haul operations, these delays have severely disrupted efforts to modernize their wide-body fleets. On multiple occasions, Emirates President Sir Tim Clark has openly questioned Boeing's competence and its ability to deliver on schedule. At the height of his frustration, the carrier even threatened to cancel its 777X orders altogether. Although such threats never materialized, the fact that they were voiced repeatedly speaks volumes about the level of dissatisfaction. Ironically, Emirates has since returned to place additional orders, underscoring both its dependence on the aircraft and the lack of alternatives. Wait. 
Don't forget to hit subscribe because we know you're going to love what's coming next. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. Meanwhile, other carriers, including Cathay Pacific and ANA, have also expressed discontent over the persistent delays and the ripple effects on their fleet strategies. More seriously, industry analysts and observers argue that such frustration is entirely justified, particularly given the substantial planning, investment, and anticipation airlines have devoted to integrating the 777X, only to see their timelines continuously pushed back. But there is an even more dramatic impact here. Boeing's delay presents an excellent opportunity for Airbus, its main competitor, for its A350 to thoroughly dominate the large twin-engine wide-body aircraft market. While Boeing's new jetliner is stuck in the certification vortex, the A350 is already operating efficiently and is trusted by leading airlines worldwide. For airlines that have ordered the Boeing new aircraft but are frustrated with the uncertain delivery schedule, the A3050 could once again become an attractive alternative, strengthening Airbus's leading position in this segment. For example, Lufthansa and all Nippon Airways considering adding the A35 to their fleet or even partially cancelling their 7X orders to switch to the A350 would be a major blow to Boeing's market position. This not only affects their sales, but also erodes customer confidence in the maker's ability to meet its commitments. But why does losing market share to Airbus carry such serious consequences? To understand, we need to take a closer look at the original purpose of the 777X and how Airbus sees the opportunity with the A350. This aircraft was heralded as the successor to the immensely successful 777 family, which first entered service in the 1990s, promising a breakthrough in large-capacity, long-haul, twin-engine flight. But here's the crucial point. The 777X was planned to launch with two primary passenger variants, the Dash 8 and the Dash 9. While the larger 777-9 has proven significantly successful in attracting orders, the Dash 8 variant has struggled to make an impression. Let's be clear about one thing. This isn't just a bigger aircraft. It's a smarter design built to directly compete with the Airbus A350 in an industry increasingly moving away from four-engine wide bodies. Key innovations include its unique folding wingtips, which allow the plane to operate more efficiently in the air while still fitting into existing gate spaces worldwide, along with the high-performance yet massive GE9X engine, which breaks previous limitations. But there's a deeper strategic element here. The Airbus A350 was designed from a clean sheet to take on Boeing and its dominant wide-body products. While both aircraft share many similarities, they ultimately offer airlines distinct features that play a pivotal role in their final decision. So, what are the real numbers? According to the manufacturer's pitch, the 777-9 variant can carry up to 426 passengers, while the smaller Dash 8 variant carries only 384 passengers. This compares favorably with the A350-1000, which is better equipped to seat passengers in the high 300 to low 400, whereas the A350-900 is the more optimal option for passengers looking for a capacity in the low to mid 300. In terms of range, the Dash 8 boasts an impressive 16,170 kilometers, while the larger variant is expected to offer 13,500 kilometers. This remains a suitable range for most airlines, but it's only slightly ahead of the A350-900, 15,000 km, and the A350-1000, 16,100 km. But what truly blows many people's minds is that this range comes hand-in-hand -hand with critically important fuel consumption, which could be a key deciding factor for airlines. The Dash 9 is said to consume 48 pounds of fuel per nautical mile, while the A350-1000 is only around 32 pounds. While this metric will fluctuate quite significantly depending on the route, configuration, and total weight, this disparity shows the A350 has a distinct advantage. Finally, one of the biggest differences is physical size. With the 777-9 outperforming the A350 in every metric, its fuselage is approximately 2.7 meters longer, its wingspan is 8 meters larger, and its height is even increased by approximately 2.4 meters. When looking back, both the Boeing new aircraft and the Airbus A350 were designed to conquer long-haul and ultra-long-haul routes, providing airlines with a balance between range and fuel efficiency. The 7X establishes itself as a prime choice for high-capacity transportation markets, especially the Dash 9 variant. Its ability to carry more than 400 passengers is ideal for meeting the high demand from airlines still operating on the hub-and-spoke model. Conversely, the A350, with its slightly more modest capacity but still holding critical performance metrics, offers valuable flexibility across an airline's entire route network. 
This is what has made the A350 a popular choice among airlines that also favor what the 787 can do with its more modest wide body size. Therefore, despite Boeing Jetliner's superior advantages in size and capacity, the uncertainty around its delivery timeline has turned the A3050 into a reliable and immediately available alternative, cementing its leading market position. This is the real reason behind the 7X's failure, not because it isn't a good aircraft, but because it missed its best moment. Well, more importantly, how do these delays impact Boeing itself? Clearly, the 7X issues are not just a minor setback. They are an ongoing financial and reputational crisis with multiple layers. Financially, with each passing day, the program's development costs increase, eroding the company's valuable resources. The U.S. maker is burning billions of dollars on prolonged tests and certification processes, which puts immense pressure on its balance sheet. In addition to escalating R&D costs, Boeing also faces the possibility of colossal financial compensation to airlines for failing to deliver on time, directly harming its profits. This delay also decreases the company's stock value in the market, causing investors to lose confidence and weakening the company's overall financial position. But perhaps the worst impact is not financial. After the 737 MAX crisis, the 7X's delay is merely a symptom of a deeper-seated issue. The story of a company grappling with profound difficulties in engineering and certification processes. The trust of airlines, regulatory agencies, especially the FAA and the public, has been severely eroded. When major customers like Emirates publicly express their disappointment, it sends a powerful negative signal to the entire market, showing that even long-term partners are losing patience. This loss of trust can lead to long-term consequences, making airlines hesitant to order new Boeing aircraft models in the future. The strategic impact is also very significant. The focus of resources on fixing this jetliner's issues has diverted attention and capital from other future aircraft programs. For example, the 777-8F freighter program, which is based on the same platform, is also at risk of being delayed, creating an opportunity for Airbus to enter this market with its A350F. This shows that the 7X's delay not only affects a single program, but also risks reducing Boeing's competitiveness in the aviation market for many years to come, creating a strategic vacuum that Airbus can fully exploit. Once again, the aviation industry finds itself disappointed with Boeing, disappointed with the 777X program. The prolonged delays have not only eroded the trust of airlines that staked their future on this aircraft, but also revived a troubling pattern reminiscent of the 737 MAX crisis. In the end, the story of this aircraft serves as a stark reminder that in aviation, trust, efficiency, and commitment can determine the fate of an aircraft program, and perhaps even the future of a company. For Boeing, regaining that trust will be its greatest challenge in the years ahead.